Hey guys, good morning. This week we are going to get into our fractions, okay? So before we get into like all the fractions, the adding, so we're just going to do adding, subtracting this week, okay? We do need to know how to convert fractions, okay? From fractions to decimals and then of course decimals to fractions, all right? So you can go ahead and press pause and copy what you have. Make sure you do skip some lines because I am going to do the examples with you, okay? But for the most part, you can go ahead and pause and copy what you can and leave some spaces like I did, okay? But we are on page 15, converting fractions to decimals. Okay. All right, so the first part we're going to do is going to be a lot of writing today, all right, because it's a lot of rules you have to know. So what is a fraction? A fraction is part of a whole number, pretty much, okay? Part is a numerator, whole is a denominator. So it's written with one number on top and one number on the bottom. Now, if your numerator is smaller than your denominator, then that's just a regular um, proper fraction. When your part is bigger than your whole amount, that is improper, okay? And that's when we can take a whole number out. And then, of course, if you have a whole number, next to a fraction like this that is called a mixed number, okay? So we're going to be dealing with those types of numbers today. But the first one, let's go back to a couple of weeks ago at the beginning of the school year when we were doing decimals. So I want to remind you how to go from a fraction to a decimal. The only thing you have to do here to go from a fraction to a decimal is pretty much divide. Now where some students might make a mistake is to figure out which one goes in, which one goes out, okay? So in a fraction like this, the top number will fall into the house, okay? Top goes in, bottom stays out, and now you divide. Now the whole point of this is we are going to have a decimal, so you need to be very careful when you are dividing. Five cannot go into two, okay? So if it can go into two, put a zero there as a placeholder, and to move on, add a decimal. You have to add a decimal, okay, and then add a zero. And then five goes into 20 four times, and no remainder, or not, we, we don't have to go on any further, so we're done. So two fifths, written as a decimal, is zero and four tenths. And that is my answer right there. Okay? So be care, very careful in division. Here I want to change one third into a decimal. So the top number, the numerator, goes inside, okay? And I think in elementary, some students used to tell me N is numerator, so at night, you go inside. Three is denominator, D, day, you stay outside, okay? So numerator goes inside, denominator stays outside. Now we go ahead and divide. Three into one goes zero times. Go ahead and put your placeholder there. Add a decimal so we can keep on dividing because we want a decimal as an answer. And add your zero. 3 goes into 10, 3 times, because 3 times 3 is 9. Subtract. Now, if I want to keep on going, now, from, since I already have the decimal, I could just add zeros and keep going, okay? Uh, 3 into 10 goes 3 again. Are you noticing something? I'm going to keep on getting 1 as a remainder, add 0, get 10. It's going to keep on going. It's going to keep on repeating, okay? So this, when it repeats the same number, we call this a repeating decimal. This is a repeating decimal, okay? Versus this one where it actually stopped, this is what we call a terminating decimal. Okay, so terminating, it terminates, it stops. A repeating repeats itself over and over again, okay? So since it repeats the point three over again, the way you write that correctly, you'll put zero and three tenths. You can put another one if you want to, and then put a bar. That bar up there tells me it's gonna go on continuously, okay? So one third is a number they love to use because it does go on forever. And so you just have to know that it is Point three, repeated. Okay. Now let's get into the mixed numbers. Remember, a mixed number is a whole number next to a fraction connected with a fraction. So this means I have two whole pizzas and half a pizza. Okay. That's what a mixed number is. I have two wholes and then I have half. Okay. Now if I want to turn this into a decimal, 
you should know that the two is a whole number, okay? So since it's a whole number, I write it right there. It's ready to go. I don't have to change the whole number into anything. It's done. I need to figure out the fraction part, okay? I need to figure out the decimal part that goes right here, okay? So, put it up there. Love the old whiteout. Love my whiteout, okay? So now we're going to go ahead and divide the fraction only. So we're going to take one, numerator goes in, denominator two stays out, okay? So two into one goes zero, and you remember what we have to do next? Decimal and the zero. And two goes into 10, five times, and it terminates, it stops, so we're done. Now remember, the zero means I have no whole numbers here because I have the two. So that two really goes there where the zero goes. 0.5 goes right there. So two and one half, written as a decimal, is 2.5. Just like that, okay? So if they ask you to go from a fraction to a decimal, you just divide. Numerator goes in, denominator stays out, okay? Uh, let's take a look at some more, okay? Second part, let's go backwards now. Let's go from a decimal to a fraction. I like to think about this one, the way you say a decimal is the way you write the decimal as a fraction, okay? So the decimal number, the number that you say is a numerator, it's a top number. The denominator is the place value you say. So tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, that is your denominator, okay? So the number itself is your numerator. The place value is the denominator. So let me show you. We have this number here. If you know how to say it correctly, it makes your life a lot easier. We say this three tenths, okay? So the number itself, three, is my numerator, okay? So I just put that number on top. The place value, I said tenths, this is in the tenth spot, is my denominator. Tenth is really just a 10, okay? Oops. So three tenths is three over 10, three tenths, okay? The way you say it is the way you write it. Let's try another one, okay? How would you say this one correctly? Nine, we got nine, okay? So nine is my numerator. And what place value is this one? It's the hundredths, because there's your tens, so this is the hundredths, okay? So hundredths would be written as 100. So nine hundredths, just like that. Okay, that's why it's so important you understand how to read um, decimals correctly. Okay. Now this one, I see a whole number. So when you see a whole number, you already know it's not gonna be a regular um, fraction, it's gonna be a mixed number, okay? Because I have now holes. So how do we say this one correctly? Two and seven tenths. So we're gonna write that the way we just said it, okay? So two is my whole number, and is gonna be set up my fraction, there's your and. Seven is my numerator, and the place value, tenths. So it's gonna be 10. So the way you say it is the way we write it. So two and is a fraction bar, Seven is my numerator, and the place value tenths is my denominator, okay? Good job. Let's try this one. How would you say this correctly? 42 and, so there's my fraction, one, now think about the place value. This is tenths, hundredths, thousandths. 1,000. So 42 and 1, 1 thousandths. That is how you would go from this decimal to this mixed number right here. Okay? 
So on this page, all we did was go from a fraction to a decimal, you divide. On part two, we went from a decimal to a fraction. The way you say it is the way you write it, okay? All right, now let's talk about our lovely improper versus proper versus mixed, okay? So on the back, you're not gonna have a try it out because we're gonna do some more writing, okay? So if you need to, go ahead and press pause so you can go ahead and copy this down and we'll continue on with the lesson, okay? So we are right here, go this way, and you can go ahead and press pause, okay? And we'll come back. All right, so now for part three, we are going from mixed numbers to improper fractions, okay? We're going from mixed numbers to improper fractions. There's three steps doing this. We call it the Texas wheel. I don't know how y'all talked, how y'all learned it, but the Texas wheel is what we use. Um, some students I've heard them call it the Texas two-step. Okay, so either one, whatever you used was fine. But pretty much what the Texas wheel is, or the Texas two-step, is you're going to multiply the denominator by the whole number. Okay. Then you're going to take that product, the answer, and add the numerator into that, okay? And of course, the denominator is always going to stay the same. So let me show you how that works. So if I want to change 3 and 1 eighths, this is how the Texas wheel works. Texas is T, X, add, multiply. See, aren't you glad you're from Texas? And we're going to go ahead and do what it says. We're going to make a wheel. The wheel goes around. We're going to do 3, 8 times 3, okay? So 8 times 3 is 24. Then we're going to add 1 to it, which gives you 25, okay? That's how you find the new numerator. So again, we go 8 times 3 is 24, plus 1 is 25, and your denominator stays the same. And you, that's it. That is how you convert from a mixed number to an improper fraction. Okay. Now, when will I need this? I'll need this when I am dividing fractions. Okay. When I am multiplying fractions, I will definitely need to know how to do this. Okay. Because when multiply and divide, we need everything in a fraction form, whether it be improper or proper. Okay. So let's try this again. I want to change 2 and 3 fifths from mixed number to improper. Remember, improper is the numerator is bigger than the denominator, okay? So, put the abbreviation for Texas, T-X, okay? And now we're going to do the wheel. 5, 5 times 2 is 10. 10 plus 3 is 13. And your denominator? stays the same, it comes into the answer, okay? So it's just like a nice little Texas wheel. We do denominator times whole number, add the numerator, and that's how you get your new one, okay? Very good. Hopefully I'll remember some of this stuff from elementary. I know it's hard to remember everything, especially fractions, nobody loves fractions. I love fractions, they're fun, okay, and easy. All right, let's go to the next one. Now let's go backwards. Now we want to go from improper to mixed. Improper to mixed, okay? To do that, all you have to do is divide. It's like you're going back to um, doing decimals. You're just gonna divide, okay? But on this one, your quotient, okay? is your whole number and your remainder, I don't want you to add a decimal and move on, I want you to write the remainder down. The remainder is the numerator. And of course your denominator is gonna stay the same, okay? So let's try this out. I guess I did that right. Let's make it pretty, okay. So we're going to divide. So let's try and divide here. So if you remember from before, numerator goes in, denominator stays out, okay? Let's go ahead and take this one digit at a time. Five can't go into one. I'm using that as a placeholder. Five into 12, 
twice. So 2 times 5 is 10. Remainder, 2. Okay? We stop there. I don't need a decimal. I need to move on. Okay? Now, this is how we rewrite it. My answer to is my whole number. Okay? So the quotient is my whole number. My remainder is my numerator. And my denominator stays the same. Okay? So that's how you go again from improper to mix. I'll do it again. Okay? The numerator goes inside. Denominator stays outside. Divide. Don't add a decimal. Move on. Once you have a remainder, stop. Okay? This is back into the beginning of long division. So my answer is 2 remainder 2. The answer to here is a quotient. That is my whole number. My remainder right here is my numerator, and the denominator comes into my answer. Okay? So 12 fifths, this improper fraction written as a mixed number is 2 and 2 fifths. Okay? Let's try another one. 10 over 2. That is an improper fraction. So I'm going to go ahead and divide, okay? 10, the numerator goes in, denominator stays out. And let's go ahead and divide. 2 goes into 1, 0 times. 2 goes into 10, 5 times. Remainder 0. Awesome. So if your remainder is a 0, if you have 0 remainder, that means your answer is just a whole number, okay? So on this one, I'm just going to have... Five. Since I have no remainder, I have no fraction. I have five holes. Okay? Five whole pizzas. Okay? So zero remainder, no fraction. All right? One more. We're going to change this improper fraction, 13 over 2, into a mixed number. Okay? So 13 divided by 2. Okay, so let's take it one digit at a time. 2 can go into 0, but 2 can go into 13 how many times? Okay, can go in 6 times, and look, now I have a remainder 1. Okay, so let's think about this. Remember, my answer, the quotient here, is going to be my whole number, okay? Then my remainder is going to be my numerator, and the denominator, since I have a fraction, the denominator comes into my answer. It stays the same, okay? So 13 halves written as a mixed number is 6 and 1 half, okay? And those are the four points that you do need to know, all right? Now, we do have another part, okay? So this is your converting, converting part. I want you to go ahead and add that into comparing and, and um, simplifying fractions, okay? So you do need to know those two as well. So new page, page 16, right there, okay? Compare fractions. You can go ahead and press pause if you'd like, so you can copy. Make sure you do skip spaces, please, all right? Okay. All right, so how to compare. Uh, you could do the long way and find the LCD, okay, and then compare them that way. But by, my, by seventh grade, you should be able to do the shortcut. And the shortcut is basically cross multiply and compare the products. We call it the butterfly method, okay, and I'll show you why. So if I want to compare 1 half to 3 eighths, remember comparing means checking to see which one is greater than, less than, or equal to. Okay, so those are the three symbols you're going to see. So if I want to check 1 half compared to 3 eighths, we're going to do the butterfly method, and this is how it works. We're going to cross multiply, so I'm going to go across like this, and multiply. So 8 times 1, and I put the product on top of that wing, okay? Then I'm going to go the other direction. 
2 times 3. And that answer is 6. So that's why I do different colors. I make sure that I do them correctly. So 2 times 3, the answer goes there. 8 times 1, the answer goes here. Okay. Now we're going to compare the products. So let's take a look at the products. I have 8 over here on the left and 6 on the right. So is 8 less than, greater than, or equal to 6? It's greater than. Therefore, 1 half is greater than 3 eighths. Okay? 1 half is greater than 3 eighths. And what you're really doing here, guys, without even knowing it, you really are finding the LCD between these numbers and multiplying the numerator by that number. Okay? That's what the shortcut actually is. All right? But we just have to look at the numerators. Okay? Because that's the one that's most important. So that's where we do the cross products. All right? Let's try it again. Okay? I'm comparing four-fifths to one-half. Doing the butterfly method. Okay? We're going to go four times two is eight. Okay? Then I'm going to go the other direction. Five times one, five. And now we can compare the products. Eight compared to five. Is eight less than, greater than, or equal to five? Greater than. So that means four fifths is greater than one half. Okay? Almost done. Let's take a look at the next group. One half compared to four eighths. Let's butterfly it. Okay? So we're going to go one direction. One times eight is eight. Now we're going to go the other direction. Two times four is eight. Okay? Now we just compare the two. Eight compared to eight is eight less than, greater than, or equal to eight. It's equal. So therefore, one half is equal to four eighths. Okay? Now here I'm comparing two mixed numbers. First thing you look at is the whole numbers. Are the whole numbers the same? Yeah. So that's not going to help me. So let's take a look at the fractions. We're going to solve the fractions the exact same way using the butterfly method, okay? So I'm going to multiply 2, I mean 4 times 2, 8, and then I'm going to go the other way. 9 times 1 is 9. Now, I didn't do anything with the whole number 2s because they're the same. They're not going to help me. Not going to help me at all, okay? So now we're going to compare the products. 8 is less than, greater than, or equal to... 9. It is less than. Okay. So 8 is less than 9. So 2 and 4 ninths is less than 2 and 1 half. Good job. I like the butterfly method. It's fun, quick, and easy. Okay? All right. Let's go to simplifying. Simplifying, or they like to call it reducing as well. Okay? That's when you take a fraction and simplify it down to its smallest form. Okay, now how do we do that? We divide the numerator and denominator by the greatest common factor. So in other words, you have to ask yourself, what can I divide these two numbers by? Okay, and they have to be the same number, all right? So for example, let's look at the six and the 10. How can I simplify that? In other words, you have to ask yourself, what can I divide six and 10 by? They have to be the same number. Now, if you take a look at your materials, go to the materials section in your classwork. I put up there divisibility rules, okay? Those divisibility rules would be great for simplifying, okay? So let's take a look here, six and 10. They're both even numbers. If they're both even numbers, you can always divide them by two, okay? Now you have to divide both by two. So I'm gonna divide six by two, and 10 by two, okay? So then six divided by two is three, 10 divided by two is five. And then ask yourself always, can I go further? Nope, there's no number, no special number that I can divide both three and five by, so I'm done, okay? Now look at eight and 20. I know they're both even, so I know they both can be divided by two. 
but is there a greater number I can divide them by? When you can divide them by two, it'll just take you a lot longer, okay? So can divide them by four. I can divide them by four. And like I said, always if you ask yourself, can I go further, you'll, you'll never get them wrong, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and divide eight by four and 20 by four. Remember, these have to be the exact same numbers, okay? Exactly the same. So let's go ahead and do the math. Eight divided by four is two, and 20 divided by four is five. And uh, can I go further with two fifths? No. So your final answer is gonna be two fifths, okay? Good job, guys. I know it was a long one, I know. So now you're gonna have to do some try it outs, okay? Let's go ahead and press pause. I just want you to compare these two and simplify those two and come back when you have your answers. All right, let's see if we got them right. When you compare 3 twelfths to 1 fourth, you should have done 3 times 4 is 12, and then 12 times 1 is 12, and you should have seen that they are equal. So if you got it right, good job. Okay, let's go this way. 4 times 8, 32. 9 times 3, 27. Make sure you know your multiplication tables. Compare them, 32 is greater than 27. So greater than for that one. Simplifying, what did you simplify 20 and 32 by? Now most of you might have just put a two. So I'm gonna go by two just to show you that no matter what, I'm gonna get the same answer, okay? So if I divide it by two, you would have gotten 10 over 16. And then I would have been like, you know what? I can go again. So I'm gonna divide them by two again. Because they're both even. If you have, a, if you have two even numbers, can always divide by two, okay? 10 divided by two is five. 16 divided by two is eight. And that is as far as I can go. I have one odd, one even, and I know five cannot go into eight, so I'm good. So five eighths. So you could have divided it by four, or you could divide it by two. Either way, we go all the way to five eighths. And the last one, 15 and 27. At first you'd think like, hey, I can't, they're not even. Here's where the threes come in. Okay, don't forget our lovely number threes. Now, the divisibility rule with three is if I add the two digits together, in other words, one plus five, I get six. I know six is a multiple of three. So 15 can be divided by three. Look at 27. If I add seven and two, I get nine. Nine is definitely a multiple of three. So I can divide both of these by three. And that'll get me 15 divided by three is five and 27 divided by three is nine, five nines. Okay, I put on some bonus videos for you guys. Um, let me know if you need any more help, okay? And I will see y'all tomorrow. Don't forget to do your assignments, please. Bye.